Hey guys, today we are going back to MTG Finance for one day at least. We'll give it another go. And a lot of you are asking what we should invest in and what we should buy. It's quite simple, reserve list and reserve list only. Even something as bad as Motomli, and this card is, was always bad. I remember it Urza's Legacy and I probably misread it and believed it was good because it's like, oh, hey, it's equal to the total number of all players' hands. So it's also my opponent's, which is not bad, but he is also not very good. But being not very good does not mean anything if it is on a reserve list. So it is now a $4 card from probably like 25 cents, 20 cents. There are plenty of really good reserve list cards in Urza's Legacy and Urza's Urza's Legacy and Mirage. I think Mirage is the one I would target. Homelands is kind of interesting because Homelands is so cheap, but the cards are very weak. So if a card like Motomli has any ability to see EDH play, it will see EDH play. Being on the reserve list is its only benefit. It's not very strong. It's been outclassed by multiple cards currently. Reserve list, legend, it will eventually go up in price. Now let me talk about boxes and stuff like that. It used to be you could buy a box of this. Like let's say if you bought a box of Urza's Legacy, you would be good. You cannot buy a box of any set RTR or newer and be good. And the exception could be Modern Masters 1, but Modern Masters 1 will lose value. Here's why. They're going to keep reprinting that Tamagoyf. They're going to re keep reprinting that Aether Vial. Nothing is sacred. And the problem Modern Master 1 and Modern Masters 2 and all these Modern Masters have is the same problem that any set has in Modern. Reprints into Oblivion. Now, I know people say, oh, well, I enjoy drafting it. I enjoy it as a collector's item. That's a very small subset of people. The majority of people want to roll the dice. That's why when you look at Future Sight, the price has stagnated and or gone down a ton. Future Sight boxes, and it's not because there's more of them. They can only ever be less. It's just that that pulling that Tomogorf does not mean as much now. The fact that Tomogorf is $70. So Lotus Veil, vale, I did call this card. You can watch my older videos. I said this card is the card I would put my money in. And I did. Veil, vale, Lotus, Reserve List. Am I surprised it went from $10 to $40? No, not at all. It has Lotus in its name and it's on the Reserve List. That is two very unique things. And Weatherlight, Weatherlight has some really good Reserve List. Essentially, what I'm trying to tell you is the only investment or speculation I can see is cards on the reserve list. If they're not on the reserve list, they're not worth buying in my opinion. Here's another one that I invested heavily in. Scorch Ruins. Um, I have a lot of Weatherlight and these cards used to be bulk and they are in my bulk. You think I'm kidding, but I am not. So the it spikes up a ton because of the a drowsy and they need a colorless mana and they're like oh this is colorless mana great but i always knew this was an ed8 card and i always knew it was on a reserve list a reserve list land like lake of the dead for instance i think that still has room to go the alliance lands all like anytime you have a land legendary or not and it's on a reserve list and it has the potential to see play in EDH, it's going to be pricey. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually it will spike. I have no interest in modern cards. I have no interest in standard cards. I have no interest in boxes. I have no interest in booster packs. None of this stuff is relevant today, in my honest opinion. Unless the booster box actually has reserve list cards in it, then obviously that's relevant relevant that the single cards in it are going up in price. So if you look at the Alliance box, Alliance really only had, Lake of the Dead's pretty good, but it only really had Force of Will. Force of Will on Common just makes the Alliance box worth opening, 
but now Force of Will got cheaper. Our Tempest, the Wasteland got cheaper, but some of it was offset by Ancient Tomb and stuff like that. Regardless, my point being, older boxes will be okay because they have re reserve list cards and they have cards that are more are gaining value. The newer boxes, modern boxes, especially RTR and beyond and sooner, they have no hope. There is no hope. Journey into Nyx, and even, even if there was hope, it would be hope for a brief moment in time, and then they would reprint the most valuable card, like Dot Seas, for instance. You thought that, hmm, hey, maybe if I held on to my Pharos boxes and Dot Seas got super expensive, I would be okay. Nope, not okay. You'd be like, oh, what about these God cards I could get? Nope, eventually they will be reprinted too. And here's the, here's the honest truth. And you guys want someone to tell you, MTG Finance is very easy now. It's so simple, anyone can do it. You don't need to listen to podcasts. You don't need to wait a month for the paywall to go off in Star City Games. You don't need to do any of this. It's super simple. Old cards, good. New cards, bad. You couldn't... This is not the back in the day I made a very good call on Underworld Connections. I bought a ton and I have my TCG player receipt for it. Eight cents. I bought 200 copies at eight cents, eight to 10 cents a copy. They became 2.99. I was able to trade four of them into a Shockland all day. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. You're never gonna find an Underworld connection because the problem is there's just too many boxes. And yes, maybe they have less rivals of Ixalan, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, you cannot compare today's box run with the big box retailers like Target and Barnes and Nobles and Walmart with something like Arsha's Legacy, where the only place I knew to get it was either from Wizard Coast's own game store or Radio Shack. Walmart did not, was Walmart around? I think we, yeah, I think Walmart was around when I was younger in my neighborhood. Uh, we just never shopped there because we shopped local. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Hatred, again, is another very good example of a card. I used to love this card. If you got a one life lead, what you would do is you dark ritual, dark ritual into it, and then you attack, or you sacrifice 19 of your life, or and then you kill your opponent. And that's how you win the game. With preferably a shadow creature that they cannot block, right? So Hatred is a really fun card. And I'm not surprised to see it go up. All these cards on the reserve list, even if they are slightly good, kind of good. Hatred's also a pretty good fun card for Infect. Uh, just as a casual card. That's where the money is. That is where you, you want to be in. Hatred was a... Hitcher was never a bulk card like Motami and uh, Scorch Ruin. It was never a bulk card, but it was never considered a good card. It was never like, here's another example of the Jin. And during Concha Tarkir, this card looks like it was hmm, $200, $300. And now it is a $1,000 card. Maybe it drops and goes back down to 500 But regardless, let's assume it's a $500 card. This is the stuff that goes up in price. Is this card very strong? So actually, there's a 2 in front of the double black. So it costs 4 for a 5-5. Five five that deals 1 damage to you during your upkeep. Would this card, if printed, reprinted today, any standard set, set be considered very powerful? Absolutely not. But it is collectors. It is... It was one of the most powerful cards at the time. And if you're going to play old school, this is the one you want. Because in old school, creatures were incredibly weak, spells were incredibly strong. And that is the reverse of what we have today. Today we have just all types of amazing creatures for four mana, right? Five, five, I mean, literally, if this card was printed today, it would be laughed at. It could not even be printed as a rare. Don't even think about printing this as a mythic. It cannot be printed as a rare because it's too weak. Four mana for a 5-5 five five with double black that cost you one life a turn. Mm -mm -mm, not worth it. I mean, for four, you can get JC Mind Sculptor in modern. 
Oh, sorry. In Legacy, you can get JC, not Mind Sculptor. And in Modern, what can you get for? You used to be able to combo off with Splinter Twin. What is for? Hmm. Okay, someone leave me the most strongest card at four. In mod in modern, and someone leave me the strongest card at four in standard. I feel like one. It's got to be one of those dinosaurs has very high power and toughness. Anyway, that's it. So very simple. Key number one: do not pay for finance information because it's not relevant. Key number two: buy old bulk. Buy reserve list cards that are not have not yet spiked that you believe or you yourself play in EDH decks. And stay away from buying standard modern unless you are playing those formats. They're not going to hold price. It used to be that modern could hold price. It cannot. There is no hope for modern. The prices are not, not going to hold. And it is just, I'm waiting for something to happen. It could be 25th anniversary, ma master's anniversary. But one of these sets are going to reprint so hard that it just tanks the market. So they tried to do that with the, what is it called? The Mana Drain, right? The Mana Drain got reprinted so hard in so many quantities that no one wanted that the Iconic Masters is, Rudy's now selling them for $120 shipped to you a box. Not a great sign for a product that MSRP was 240 Not a great sign. Anyway, that is it. Bye.